Hello, and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today I am making a breast milk soap. And I've made these before in the past, um, and today I'm gonna do it again. My sweet niece uh, had weaned her baby and found some old breast milk in the back of her freezer, and she didn't wanna to toss it out because I think breast milk is like liquid gold. Um, so I'm going to make her some special soap just for her. Now, I've talked about this in other videos where I made breast milk soap, Personally, I would not market this soap. Uh, I make it as a per mother and family kind of a custom batch is how I'm approaching. That's how I do breast milk soap, but I think it's wonderful. And so for the fragrance in this soap, she likes really feminine fragrances. I have this uh, Falling in Love from Be Scented, and this is a dupe. I'm not sure is this it? on here. It's a philosophy dupe. I've not smelled the real thing, but this smells delightful. And I have soaked with it. It behaves beautifully. It doesn't discolor. It's gonna be perfect in this soap. So that's the fragrance. And I'm just gonna do one color swirl with a little bit of this Rosebud Mica, also from Be Scented. And it is such a beautiful kind of plummy pink color. I love it. And it kind of goes with the fragrance to me. It's just feminine, beautiful. This is mommy's soap, mommy and baby soap. Uh, so. I am going to bring you along while I prep the breast milk and make my lye solution with that. I'm not doing milk and oil because I have a lot of her milk and I want to have 100% milk in this soap. And I will share the full recipe for today's soap down below and the volume of what I'm doing, making, you know, the size of batch that I'm making. Um, so I need to get everything pulled together, get my equipment out get my breast milk out, it's frozen, and bring you along as we make some really gentle, personal, custom batch breast milk soap. All right, we're back. And the first thing that I wanna do is prep my oils, and then we will get to our breast milk lye solution. So the first thing that I like to do when I'm getting my oils prepped is measure out my hard oils and butters and get them melted and then add my liquid oils. So first things first, I've gotta add my coconut oil, palm oil and cocoa butter are the three hard oils and butter that we're using today. First oil and is on. coconut oil. I need 15 ounces of coconut oil. Okay, there's our coconut oil. Now I need 15 ounces of palm oil. And the last hard butter is my cocoa butter wafers. I got these from Wholesale Supplies Plus. Um, I have gotten them from Be Scented. Uh, I just like the wafers because they're so easy to measure out because uh, cocoa butter is so hard. So I'm a wafer fan, but any cocoa butter will do. And we need two ounces of cocoa butter. All right, now we've got our hard oils and our butter in there. I'm gonna get this melted, just pulsing it in the microwave. If you hate the microwave, use a double boiler. Any way you like to do it, just get this melted up. All right, the hard oils and butter are all melted and I absolutely love a natural cocoa butter because I love that chocolatey scent. But if you don't like that scent or it will conflict with the fragrance you're using, go ahead and use a refined, deodorized version. It makes, it's the, it's the same saponification value. That's what I'm trying to say. Whether it's refined or unrefined, it soaks the same. It's just a preference of how you like your oils and butters. So anyway, this smells fantastic. That warmed cocoa butter is, I love it. Now it's time for the liquid oil. And the first one I'm gonna be using is sunflower oil. And I need six ounces of sunflower oil. And I just have my stick blender down in here because after we measure the oils, we're gonna go ahead and mix our additives in here. So, all right, six ounces, sunflower oil. All right, and the next liquid oil and the final oil is 32 ounces of olive oil. And I get mine from Sam's Club right now. It's Currently, it's the best price I've found and it soaks really well. So 32 ounces going on in. All right, we're back for the soap additives and uh, I like to add dry ingredients at a rate of about a teaspoon per pound of oils. You can go up to a tablespoon per pound of oils and not overload your soap, but I usually go around a teaspoon. And so my two tablespoon scoops, you can see this is a little lower volume than what I normally do. So I'm going to ballpark. This is a two tablespoon scoop and I'm doing it shy. So I'm gonna call this probably about four teaspoons is what I'm doing or thereabouts. Again, it's not a super specific 
um, thing where you're you're gonna you're you're not gonna hurt your soap if you get the wrong volume of your dry ingredients in there. Only if you added like a cup of powder in a small batch. I mean, you can go crazy with it. But if you're using a teaspoon per pound or in the range of that, you're not gonna overload your soap. You're gonna be just fine. That was my colloidal oatmeal because it's so gentle and I love it in soap. And so I've got the clay, I've got the oats. I have the fragrances already in here on the oils. I've soaked with this fragrance before, and so I know it behaves really well. If you know that about your fragrance, you can go ahead and throw it in the oils, or you can hold off until all your colors are blended. Either way is totally fine. So err on the side of caution if you're not sure. But let me get this all blended up, and we'll push this off to the side and get our lye breast milk prepped after I get this blended. back and let me tell you what we've got going on in here but first let me show you this is a little paint storage can from Lowe's or I'm sure Home Depot or any hardware store they make great lye containers they come with lids they're super inexpensive they have measurements on the side so these are fabulous inexpensive soaping containers just FYI but what I have in here is 23 ounces of breast milk. You could do any milk you want. If breast milk icks you out or <laughs> you don't have any, or you could do coconut milk, frozen coconut milk, goat milk, oat milk, you know, any milk you want. But today I'm showing you how to make 100% milk soap. And I actually calculated this whole recipe based on the amount of milk I had. Usually I figure out how big of a mold I have and then I go from there. But today, because this is a special ingredient, I had to weigh it out and then I calculated my how much soap I could make with this much milk. So there it is, 23 ounces, and here is my lye sodium hydroxide, and it is 9.8 ounces of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to be adding it in here very, very slowly, and hopefully it won't yellow up too much if I'm super, super cautious. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little on here and let it sit for a minute, and it will start reacting with the moisture in the milk and Again, you know, goat milk and coconut milk, any milk, if you're doing a full milk, I suggest having it frozen in little cubes or even a slushy consistency. Um, that's the best way to do a full milk. Now, I do like to do milk and oil method when I'm not doing a full milk recipe because it's so easy and quick. Um, and the prep time's a lot easier than this, but here's how you do full milk. Also, because I'm doing a full milk today, I'm not gonna be adding silk or sugar because I don't have water, I don't have anything to melt it into. And I'm hoping to add this lye slow enough so that the temperature of this milk will not rise very much. So it will not be warm enough to melt my silk fibers. Um, and once you add the lye, you can't add the sugar because it just doesn't dissolve properly. So no sugar and no silk in today's recipe. So I'm gonna probably speed the video up as I do this. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little at a time, give it a little zhuzh around, and then sprinkle a little more and just proceed forward very slowly. And I have my lye all the way in here. It's fully melted and it didn't even get that hot because I went very, very slow. So let's take the temperature. I'll tell you what it's at. We're at 82 degrees. And then over here on our oils, we're at 91 degrees. So that's perfect. I'm very comfortable soaping at those temperatures. Also today for this volume recipe, I'm gonna be using my double uh, tall skinny mold from Workshop Heritage. So this is only gonna make two loaves instead of the triple that I normally use, but it's still a tall skinny. So I'm gonna put that off to the side and let's add our milk lye solution in here. And again, you don't have to use breast milk. You could use any milk or you could do water. So this recipe is adaptable. You don't have to make breast milk soap with it. <laughs> you can make whatever kind of soap you like. 
So I have my color off to the side, dispersed in just a little bit of distilled water to make blending easier. And I'll probably do a hanger swirl today if everything's behaving. So I like to stir a little bit and then pulse and stir and pulse. And that's how I get it up to emulsion. And emulsion just means all of the oils have bonded with all of the lye solution and the oils are not gonna separate and float on top. All right, let's get to our color and get this in the mold. back it's the next day and look how pretty that came out I just think this is so pretty and simple and I love the colors uh, I did put the wood lid on here and put a blanket over it so this did go through gel phase even though it was full milk I like to gel my soaps pretty much all the time so that's how I roll but if you don't like to gel and you have a milk soap right after you get it in the mold and get your top done you can throw it in the refrigerator and just leave it overnight either way is fine so let's get this out of the mold and see how that swirl came out on the inside with the lovely Olga, my multi-bar cutter, which I am loving. And I wanna talk about this fragrance a little bit. This is so pretty, I'm loving the colors. All right, let's get in here. Got a little end piece. And oh my goodness, look at those beautiful swirls. So pretty, so, so pretty. So yeah, let's talk about this fragrance, Falling in Love, and it is a dupe, and it smells so good out of the bottle. It is very light in soap, but I actually think that's nice. If you're making a very gentle bar like this, you know, breast milk soap, I didn't want anything super knock your socks off and powerful. It's just very, it's almost like the essence of the fragrance is in there. So even after it cures, I have soaked with this before, and uh, it soaps really well. This was a nice slow trace. This would be a great fragrance for a in really intricate swirl, but it worked today also. Um, but it's just a gentle, beautiful, subtle fragrance. And I thought that went along perfect with the theme today. I'm loving these colors. And here, let's see if we can see. See how it's a little bit yellow tint cast, but look how white it is here. As this sits, this will lighten up as it's exposed to the air. 
um, it just kind of rolls that way, but I think that's beautiful. So this fragrance truly does not discolor at all either. So it is good all over the place. I love it. And these swirls are making me super happy. All right, let's get into the last loaf here. And again, I only have two loaves to cut today because that was the double mold. I'm really enjoying my Workshop Heritage molds. Um, they're just very sturdy. I like the double and the triple. I think they're fantastic. And I am not sponsored by them at all. I purchased all my molds full price for myself. So that's my unbiased opinion. Oh, we're gonna get some soapy patterns, I think. Let's see. Let's do a little preview here and then I can do patterns at the end if we have them. Oh, look at that. It's a pretty butterfly. Love it. So because this fragrance was very slow moving, this is still a little bit soft today. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and bevel it. And I am not putting my shavings in the big bucket because this is a custom breast milk soap. I'm gonna keep them off to the side and I will show you what I do with shavings sometimes. We're gonna make a little soap ball. Because it's soft enough, it's gonna be pliable. And I'll just show you what we're gonna do when we get there. I'll talk you through it, but it's nice. I don't like to waste anything but this mama is gonna get all of this soap, including the shavings. So very custom batch. And this would be such a great gift idea. If you're a soaper and you know somebody who's nursing and they have excess milk, I wouldn't take away from the baby to make soap, but if they have an excess, and some moms do, what a great custom gift you could make somebody. And again, this recipe would be great as a regular milk soap or even just a water-based soap. It's just a good all-around soap recipe. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please hit that button so you don't miss anything going on in the soap studio. All right, I just wanna shave these bars down or bevel the soap bars while they're still nice and soft and pliant. And I can show you what we're gonna do here with the little soap scraps. So I just have the lid to my soap bucket that I'm gonna be putting these on. Paper plate will work fine. Just find something to catch all of your soap scraps on. And it, you can see it's still kind of sticky. Sometimes when I shave and the bars are really firm, they don't stick on the beveler at all, but this one is sticking. This beveler is just a KitchenAid vegetable peeler. I love it. It's just nice and sturdy. Any vegetable peeler will do. Um, it's, like, it's just a really inexpensive soap piece of equipment. All right, so I'm gonna get the bars all shaved up and then I have these two little end slices that are too thin to be a bar. That would break apart in the shower. So I'm just gonna shave it down and add it to the pile here and bulk up this soap pile. So nothing's going to waste. Okay, I'm back real quick before we make our little soap ball here. I just wanted to say we got 18 six ounce bars of soap with this batch in the tall, skinny double mold. Um, so that's a pretty good size batch of soap right there. I love it. I think these are beautiful size. Now my soap cutter, the strings are set at one and a quarter inch. So if you cut these to one inch, they'd probably be five ounce bars, um, but it's a nice batch of soap. All right, let's get on to the soap scraps. So because these are so pliable, this is gonna be very easy. I don't need to wet my hands. If these were a little bit stiffer, like a firmer batch of soap, you might wanna just damp your hands down, but these are very pliable. And literally, we're just gonna scoop this up and start motion it together and make a big baseball of soap, a soap ball. I think these are great and they're easy to hold on to in the shower or the bath. And this ball will sit on the curing rack with the bars and cure right along with them. And after it cures and fully dries out, um, it will be nice and firm and it won't come apart in the bathtub if you smash it really, really well and firm. And I think these are so cute. I used to always, uh, before I rebatch soap, I used to make soap balls out of all the soap scraps when I had them and then I would sell them at farmer's markets in a big container. They look so cute in a glass container. But look how pretty that is. It's a marble. Love it. So that's gonna go to the curing rack and I'm gonna get to stamping these bars. And thanks again for watching.